And Lee, we're recording. So um, you guys probably already know me. I'm Stephen Oliver, but I'm joined uh, by the lovely Lee Miltier. Lee, you're coming to us from Virginia Beach on the beach, I believe. And I am. I'm, I'm sitting here freezing my butt off on the top of the mountain in uh, Evergreen, Colorado. I always talk about how wonderful our weather is, and then we had a cold spell, and so I've got egg on my face. But anyway, we were gonna we were going to share structure of program. Uh, results and so forth, but Lee, let me start start out with you. Just you know, describe to everybody watching this: fi financial advisors, wealth managers who are really looking to grow their practice, and of course, if they're not looking to grow aggressively, they're in the wrong place. But really looking to grow their practice, what some of the benefits are that you've seen from the clients that we've uh, worked with? Oh wow, Stephen! Uh, one, your head's going to get so big because people absolutely adore you. Um, I'm familiar with many of your clients and work with them. And they're always saying that not only are you aggressive about marketing, you're aggressive about their performance, their implementation, uh, that you're very on target with figuring out how to promote something where you're, you're also doing the the opposite of what everybody else is doing. So you get traction for of it. Um, there are people just, adore you Stephen they they love all the things that you do they love all the zoom meetings and the you know all the things that you do that support them and uh it's 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 in today's world it's so so much of a pleasure to hear someone feeling like that you are the coach for them that's okay you can keep you can keep on that track for <laughs> as long as you want we don't have any, we don't well, have any I, time limitation on on uh Stroking me there, Lee. Well, I, I think one of the things, Stephen, that people like about you is that, I mean, you really are courageous to speak the truth. Mm -hmm. And that is a very hard thing to find today. Um, you know, whether, no matter what you're doing to build your wealth, uh, I think it's very important that we have coaches who are clear-minded, who are very visionary, who are people who can, you know, see the pitfalls. Uh, I really like one thing about you is that you can see people's blind spots mm -hmm. uh, because you've been coaching for so long. When you deal with people, you can instantly see, you know, you have, you know, your blind spot is over here and, you know, you just need to adjust yourself a little bit and go in this direction mm -hmm. and they get so much better, uh, you know, results for with an easier amount of time. Yeah. You know, in, in, in this niche, and I, I, I appreciate this, but the a quote I heard, I think I heard it from Dan Kennedy, but he was quoting somebody else, is, I think it was Earl Nightingale. You know, if you, if you don't have a better idea of how to grow your business, look around at what everybody else is doing and do the opposite. And I've got to tell you, being knee deep in the, you know, financial services uh, niche, working with wealth managers, financial advisors, I've never seen that to be more true is there's just this blinders of, especially on the marketing side, but on the service as well, is there's this blinders of, you know, I have this thing I can do and this thing I can do. And, oh my God, by law, we can't do this other stuff. And, oh my God, our company won't let us do this. I mean, there's all this stuff that's going on and people says that's just rubbish that keeps them from really uh, thriving and, and aggressively growing their practice. It's also you know, it's a, and you'll appreciate this. It's an industry it reminds me of vacuum cleaner sales companies. You remember the deal, you know, recruit constantly, bring them into a room, give them all a vacuum and tell them to go sell their mother and sell their, you know, sell their aunt and then they're done. Uh, this is one of those where it, it seems like everybody comes out of college, gets recruited out of college and then are told, you know, now you have all the tools, go get customers. And, you know, it becomes friends and family or cold calling. And there's just, there's just no strategy other than other than that. Um, I think but, people are when they get out of college have been programmed to be afraid of sales. Yeah, they've been af they are afraid of making waves. They're afraid of criticism. You really cannot become wealthy in this world following how the masses behave. Um, and number the one of the most important things everybody has to have is this confidence about the products and services that you're giving to people are really good. It will really help them. I always try to tell people who are afraid of sales, don't think out of it as sales. Think of it as you are an educator. Yeah. You are educating people on certain instruments that can benefit you in the long run. And you're absolutely right about, uh, I have a, 
a lot of people are financial advisors and they're always so afraid of uh, regulations. Oh yeah. And I always go, but you know, there are people who get around those mm -hmm. and they're perfectly legal. Yeah. So why are you so closed minded to that? There are other options and you can't listen to your friends. Yeah. Everybody needs a mentor and a coach and you are one of the things I appreciate about you is that you're just tell it like it is, Stephen. Um, you know, brutally, we, brutally so you're, at times. You're brutally truthful. But, but look, I as a businesswoman, I want someone to be brutally truthful for me because why would I waste my time working with a coach who's just going to, you know, pat me on the shoulder and you know, at a girl? But mm -hmm. I, hey, I need some real information, and that's one of the things that you really do. You are. Um, you read, you read so many books a year, you're well connected, you're associated with some of the top people, you know, in the world, truthfully. Uh, I always judge people by who they are associated with, mm -hmm. because people who are alike fly together. And you always fly with really high integrity people, people who are producers, people who are go getters, and you're, you're on the cutting edge. So I've been working with you since I think it's 2003 yeah, and um, 2003. Yeah. And I've known you even before that because we had we used to sit in classes together and yeah. compare our Rolexes. <laughs> well, even before that, remember, it was Career Track and Boulder. That's correct. Uh, career Track so and Boulder. Another I life. Your, <laughs> I had your cassette, tra you know, cassette tapes from what would that have been? 1985. Oh, you're showing my age now. <laughs> well, I had, you know. I had six martial arts schools, you know, when I, uh, in 80, 83, 84. So, you know, we're, we're showing both our ages, I guess. Yeah, well, that's okay. Look, you know, uh, hey, we look pretty good, you know, so we're alive, we're well, we're thriving. Yeah. Um, uh, I, you know, I think of you uh, um, every day I have in my office here, one yeah. of these, one of these jewels, I have them in gold also. Um, you know, it's oh, mine so up that you gifted me. I know. I love these things. And I'm a big person believing in wealth triggers, like just around my office, there's little packets of money and they're just everywhere because what you focus on expands. Mm -hmm. And what we want to be doing in life is focusing on scanning the landscape of our reality, looking for opportunities that are aligned with, with our services and our products. And that the more confidence we have, we automatically attract customers to us. And this is another thing, Stephen, that you have as an advantage is that people are so attracted to you. Um, you're a hoot for one thing. And uh, you, you know, it's, it's fun to work with you, but it's so important that we get out of our own way and that we have a very good coach and a very good mentor who has a plan of action that can take us step by step where your mind can intellectually understand, okay, I'm going from here to here to here. And I've been with coaches before who really don't have a really clear plan of action. Mm -hmm. And you sort of feel like you're wandering around in the desert and you're not sure where you're going. People will never feel that way about you. They will yeah. be very clear paths to wealth. Right. Right. The, uh, it, it, as, as we, as, as we work in, in, in this niche is, and you know, like, as you know, one of my projects is Peter, who's a, he's a, um, I don't know what percentage it would be. We well, you know, one tenth of 1% you know, at Northwest Mutual, which of course is a completely different beast than if you're an independent RIA. But um, it, as I look at, at what goes on in his business, is it's the same old thing in, in, in any uh, situation where I always like to have, you know, the SEAL team thing is what two is one and one is none, right? Is I like to have 20 different things going on marketing all the time. And, you know, it seems like advisors, you know, they get they get so caught up in their technical thing of following the market and all the different stuff on their technical deal that they forget every day. They've got to have five different things going on. They're going to educate clients. They're going to enrich the clients, but they're going to keep attracting new people coming in. And, and the, um, the other thing that I see that's common is everybody gets fixated on what's the magic pill, right? Is, Oh, there's this new thing with LinkedIn. There's new thing with social media. There's this new thing with, you know, whatever it might be. As you and I know, there's there's no magic pill, right? There are, you know, there's the thing that's working today, and then it stops working tomorrow, perhaps. 
you know, the COVID years are a perfect example of, you know, okay, I'm, I'm filling uh, dinner meetings and lunch meetings with people. And you'd be surprised how many people, uh, advisors imploded by just not being able to adapt and do it on a Zoom meeting or a webinar and, and, and shift focus even in that one uh, uh, mechanism. I think people focus on obstacles a lot more than rewards. Um, as an entrepreneur, every day there are obstacles for me. And I totally agree with you that you, you, you must not have a mindset that you do one thing until it's finished and then you go to the next thing. That's very corporate thinking. Well, we are entrepreneurs. Uh, entrepreneurs don't have these rules. You got to have like five things happening at the same time. Exactly. And a lot of people have a hard time. They, they think juggling all those balls, but it really, if you have good systems yeah. and you actually know what you're doing and you have a plan, and I, I'm sure you've noticed this, most people don't have a damn plan. No. They're just sort of winging it by the day. Um, I learned very, very young uh, as that I always needed a coach. I, I remember the first time I took uh, uh, skiing lessons and, and I thought I'm going to be a great skier, but I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to allow bad habits to rule me because if I go out by myself on the uh, slopes, I'm going to get some bad habits. Yeah. I'm going to get the best instructor I can find. I'm going to follow that person to the T and I will become a great skier. And I've considered this in every aspect of my life from being an entrepreneur. Um, I'm an artist. I painted that picture behind us. Um, oh. I, I take art classes all the time and people go, well, you're, you're pretty good. Why do you take classes? And I said, because I can be better. I can just, just these small little subtle differences can make you so much better by always being a lifetime student. And you know, I'm a coach. And so I have my application is really a lot about me discerning who who is open minded, who will really be a lifetime learner. If you're a, a fixed mindset person, you're not for me because I'm going to push you. And you're exactly the same way. People who have fixed mindsets are going to go broke slowly like everybody else. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, without a doubt. So I'm a big believer in, I am always in a mastermind group. I am, I, I know that I have blind spots, even though I've done this a very long time. Everybody for yourself has a blind spot because of your parents, you know, hammering stuff that they thought was well-meaning at the time uh, mm -hmm. that is not true whatsoever or, or the society that you grew up in. We all have these blind spots and we need someone who just sort of wakes you up and says, hey, wake up. That is not a good use of your energy. And remember, we have five kinds of energy. Every mm -hmm. day, this is your currency. You have mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, and financial energy. Mm -hmm. And people take the financial energy and they separate it out from their, you know, mental energy and emotional energy. It's all the same thing. How you spend your daily currency uh, is so important on, on the results that you get at the, you know, end of the year, end of the month, end of the week. Um, but one of the things you do is you stretch people to go for bigger money. Uh, you stretch people in in seeing beyond their own limitations and their blind spots. And this is what everybody who is in this field needs. They need people who are going to stretch you. What's the point of having a coach who's just going to, you know, say, well, okay, you did mediocre today. Yeah. yeah pat on the back, you know, you're, everybody you're, you're, gets you're a no trophy. Else. <laughs> <laughs> what, what a load is that? Everybody oh, yeah. gets a trophy. Oh, it's, 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 it's crazy stuff. And, and, you know, uh, uh, sometimes the best compliments you, you get are like hearing what somebody said about your third hand. And I had, I had a client who was uh, looking at working with us and he, he ended up knowing several other people that we were working with. And he, 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 he parroted this one back to me. He said, Oh, I asked my friend. And I said, well, what did he say? He goes, that guy found money laying around in my business. I would never have known existed. And I got to tell you, I've had at least 20 conversations in the last month that are like that of, well, you're already doing this really well. Have you thought about doing this, 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 this? How about if you do this? And it's just that, that thing you were saying is 
seeing blind spots and figuring out how to plus and and maximize uh, uh, those results. Another one that I thought was funny was he said, wow, that guy sure seems to be good at turning shacks into mansions. I thought that was, <laughs> I thought that was a good one. You know, this is, I think you've just brought up a very, very important point. There's so much hidden money in people's businesses that, you know, they go in, they're just blind to that. And when you can look in someone's business and say, hey, you're already set up and you, you got all, you know, it really everything is in place. All you have to do is, you know, have a plan and pull the trigger and you got another new stream of income. Uh, not only does that new stream of income always pay for all your coaching oh, yeah. and something you and I've never really talked about, but every year I budget. So um, when the new year comes, I already have a budget for how much I will spend on coaching and education for myself every year. And I never regret a dime that I put in my own education because it pays off. I am, I am one still here today after all these years because a lot of people have fallen by the wayside because I have those coaches and mentors who are basically looking after me because of things yeah. I can't see. Um, and I have that talent for other people. I don't have any skin in the game. So I can see their challenge with no emotion, no worries, no, you know, preconceived thoughts. I can just see, Hey, there's their, there's money. Um, I love when somebody helps me find money in my own business. I just love it. I mean, oh, one, I, I, I'm never shy. I love to make money. I absolutely love money because money gives you so much ability. Um, I think you know this. I just uh, did an auction with Dan Kennedy stuff. I had $50,000 yeah. worth. Um, I, I had two sets of everything. So I'm like moving my office thinking, I need to get rid of this. How could I get rid of this? So I did an auction I, and I earned $31,503. Uh, and I'm writing $31,000 checks to uh, different rescue animal organizations around the state of Virginia and different places. And it gives me such a thrill to have the ability to do that. And oh, when you earn money, folks, this you have the ability to really help people. Yeah, and and, and it's it, it, strangely in this industry where people are are getting paid exclusively to deal with other people's money, there's a, an awful lot that have blinders on just getting their own net income up. You know, they get fixated on AUM or they get fixated on 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 some other thing, and you know, it, it, as you know, it's all about how much you take home at the end of the day. I I, I think of it that it's it's all about how much money do you make and how many headaches do you have. You know, I want as few headaches as possible and to make as much money at the end of the day as possible and not be enriching necessarily my community and a big staff and all that other stuff. You know, it's about net profit, right? Um, how do I build wealth? How do I have toys? How do I, you know, have fun with the money? I, you, you I know Danny Cox. Uh, I always remember he was one of the early ones back when you were at career track, he had this great program called leadership when the heat's on. And he was, he was a, a sales manager in real estate. And he's having a conversation, you know, relayed on the tape of, you know, well, why are we working so hard? Well, the pay bills, no, you work hard to have fun with the money. Otherwise you don't have enough for either one. Right. And people lose that a lot of times. They just get into the grind of their numbers and they forget, you know, what am I going to do for fun? How is this going to, you know, ultimately benefit my bottom line? How is it going to enhance my family, enhance my uh, uh, mental uh, life? You know, I, I built a really big house a few years ago and people kept saying to me, why are you building such a big house? And I said, because I can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I want to. I said, you know, I've worked really hard in my life. I deserve the dream house on the water, on the ocean that I have always wanted. And like, I'm going to enjoy my fruits of my labor. And sure. I think what you do is help people enjoy it faster and cleaner with less stress because you have such a clear plan on how to do that. And that's, that's really the key folks have a plan, follow the plan, and then always be asking yourself. And by the way, this is where you get intuition. Um, I'm always asking myself, where is the money? Oh, yeah. Where is the money? So, you know, no matter how bad the economy is or no matter how prosper it is, I always say to myself, I'm never worried. I can always smell money. I can always be intuitively attracted to money. And that's a mindset. 
And you have to have that mindset. Your mindset is the secret of really wealth. And it's open-minded and it's it's willing to invest in things. And the number one thing you have to invest in is yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you mentioned that. I, I did the same thing going all the way back to the 80s. I don't think I've had a year in 30 years that I haven't spent at least into the six figures, you know, on education. Whether it was, you know, the MBA, uh, which arguably didn't teach me that much. It was just the letters after the name. But, you know, all of the mastermind events, I, you know, I've ordered 40 books in the last week, you know, all on the same subject. I think I stole it from Brian Tracy. He said, you know, if you read 100 books on a subject, you know, you're one of the world's leading experts. If you read 1,000, you know, you're the, you know, the expert on the subject. And that's always been me. You know, if I go into something new, I'll, you know, I, I remember, I forget who it was, one of the internet marketing gurus, I was having lunch with him and, and I sat down and he said, well, you know, how much of my stuff have you read? I said, well, I went on your archive. I printed everything out. I have four notebooks about this thick. I've read all of them and highlighted. And I had, you know, this list of questions for you. He goes, you read all that? <laughs> I said, yeah, I, you know, if I was going to meet with you, I might as well have consumed everything you've ever done. He goes, so you know more about my material than I know about my material, probably. <laughs> but, you know, you got to have somebody who has that mindset of, uh, you know, know everything there is to know about it and, and get outside of, of, of your own way. It, cycling back, it, and I think I stole it from Jay Abraham, is he talks about, you know, most people's marketing is episodic. You know, they decide in January we're going to do this big something or other. And, and really what, what you need to be in your practice is you need to be systematic, right? You, and that's where it's not that much of a, of a, of a, of a problem. I was having a conversation with, you know, my guy, Peter, and I said, so what have you done as far as uh, uh, referral systems? And that's, of course, the first question is, well, what do you mean by systems? I said, well, you, you know, you told me almost all your clients come from referrals. So what systems are you using to generate um, uh, referrals? He said, what do you mean? I said, well, we know that having events, so having a client appreciation event, having a luncheon, having a meeting of some sort, letting them bring their friends, that works really well. He goes, oh, yeah, 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 I did that. I said, okay, well, when did you do that? I have a friend who has an art gallery. We had this great client appreciation. I probably got uh, 20 referrals out of that. Great. When's the last time you did that? Oh, I only did it once. When was that? Eight years ago. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> why, why haven't you done it since? Well, that was a lot of hard work. I said, you realize it's hard work the first time. Right. And, you know, you have the checklist and the people and the stuff, and you just replicate it. As you know, I, I threw on that big event that I did for years with like 1200 participants. Well, it was really hard the first time, you know, and after that it was, I was, you know, I was wandering around looking for something to do with everything running like a top because you have a, a system in place, but it's, it's people miss that systems, you know, and, and some of that is automation. Although, you know, in today's world, the magic pill for many is, you know, is software. You know, I haven't, I haven't yet seen a software package that's going to turn somebody into a millionaire. I've seen some that'll take, you know, a little bit of burdens off here and there, but uh, uh, others that'll, you know, that'll hide money from you. You know what I mean? I do. I do. Yes. I, I let, you know, one of the things I really like about your, your system is that you have this look over your shoulder thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a visual learner primarily. So when I learn things, I actually, I really like to be able to see this is what somebody did and how they did it. It, um, Cause you know, we learn three different ways. We learn visually, auditorily, and kinesthetically. And you, you really, this is such a wonderful thing. This look over your shoulder. Um, I'm glad you added that. I, th I think that's really just, I think that's the knock out of the park home run. Yeah. Well, well that and, 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 and what's happening in real time, right? Because I see so much of this stuff, you know, and all of the gurus, I, you know, I, I not too charitably refer to it as the bozo explosion, you know, and, and, and uh, I stole that from Steve Jobs. You know, that was his, his quote is uh, all high growth companies, you know, they go from having all A players and then they start letting the A players hire some B players, the B players hire C players, and there's a bozo explosion. And as you know, when it comes to coaching, consulting, you know, being the expert or the guru, there's this bozo explosion. You and I have talked about some of them that, you know, they don't know their ass from a hole in the ground, but they can, uh, you know, they can wax on uh, eloquently about stuff they have no idea. They don't know what the numbers are. They've never produced it themselves, right? There's just this bozo explosion going on everywhere. 
facilitated by social media and YouTube and, you know, one thing or another. But the, but I think it's the, that look over your shoulder part is in part is real time, right? It's here's what's happening this month, this year in this market, you know, whether in the financially, whether it's an up market or down market, whether it's COVID or whether it's something else going on, a political year, a non-political year, is so much of what I come across is, okay, somebody put in a book or they put in a tape and here's what, you know, here's what was working on Google and, you know, three years ago. Well, I don't know, is, is, is that really working in the field today uh, with people in the same, in the same industry? And, and that's what we're getting is, you know, it, what, what I used to find, say it differently, I used to spend a lot of time where it was everything was one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm telling you, here's how you do this, and then telling somebody else, here's how you do this. And if I had 10 of them in the, in the room together, this person could ask the question and another member would answer it, and I can explain it, but then somebody says, oh yeah, yeah, I just did, I just did 50 new clients doing what he did, and here's what I did. And all of a sudden it takes it from the abstract to, oh my God, people are really doing this out in the field, it's really happening and it it spurs that implementation if that makes sense you're, you're a million percent correct um i mean i've been on meetings with you and i've actually seen that where you know you teach something and then someone has this question and then you know a bunch of people sort of jump in and then you know you're sort of guiding them along but the ahas you i mean the way that people respond to you, Stephen, of like, oh my gosh, this has like been under my nose this whole time and I couldn't see it. And I think there is a, a, an intimidation to try things that we haven't tried before and to see other people to be able to do that and how they did it and the variations on how they did it. Um, you know, a lot of people get in that, um, I have one engineer client, mm -hmm. and that's all I need. <laughs> I have one, one engineer staff member. <laughs> one engineer. And he always says, life is black and white. No, I'm actually, that's oh. not true. <laughs> I am an artist. I know that life is not black and white. And I, you know, it's very important for them that are, they have sort of a fixed mindset to see that somebody else can break out of these boundaries. Um, and I think we, we, we put boundaries on ourselves because of our self-talk of what we can and can, cannot do. And we're all self-fulfilling prophecies. And so with people working with you, they need to now, and when I work with people, I always say, I really, I'm going to stretch your mind today. I want you to open up your mind. I don't want you to say no, because a lot of people start their actual conversation with no that won't work oh, yeah. i heard of someone who did this and it didn't work or they got in trouble and i went didn't you ever play that game in in school where they started off and they whispered something into the ear and by the time they got around you know it was the message was so far off i said that's all your friends talking yeah every single one of them they're gonna they're gonna tweak the message to make it a little bit worse every single time and you're gonna buy that and you shouldn't buy that you need to go to people who have real skin in the game. Oh yeah. And um, um, you would laugh at me on, on this one, but I, I was having a uh, hosting a staff meeting uh, for one of the clients who again, 200 million assets under management, you know, um, a million five gross and over a million net in, in this practice. But I'm having a, a staff meetings for a staff, which, um, you know, I told my staff, keep reminding me, I don't ever do that. You know, anytime I volunteer, just remind me that that's not something I do. But I was thinking of you, you know, with your always follow the money sign for your staff is, you know, I, I kept repeating for him. I said, you know, this famous management theorist by the name of Peter Drucker, he said the purpose of every business is to create and keep a customer. And you guys have talked for 45 minutes. It has nothing to do with creating a customer, doesn't have anything to do with keeping a customer, and it doesn't have anything with, to do with growing the revenue from any customers. You're talking about all this technical stuff, but let's talk about how to get some new customers, some new clients in this case. Let's figure out how to grow our revenue from them. Let's figure out how to how to keep them. And and uh, and, and, and they none of them have that, you know, and it's typical employee mentality. None of them have any of those things in their mind. I have this oh. to do and I have this to do and I have this to do. No, no. Let's go get a customer. Let's make them worth more money to us. Let's keep them longer. 
get them to be fruitful and multiply. Right. I think, I think a lot of staff actually have resentment towards your selling and resentment of we need to be nice to, I mean, I've ex experienced that. I've hired people who have said, oh, well, that client is such a pain in the ass. And I'm like, yeah, but that pain in the ass sends us a check every month. And mm -hmm. they've sent us a check for 10 years. We yeah. love this pain in the ass. We don't care that they're a pain in the ass. That mm -hmm. means I have to do slight little things different from them. But some of my, and by the way, those staff are no longer working for me because yeah. Now I will not hire someone that doesn't have at least a grasp of what an entrepreneur has to do. If yeah. they are stuck in there, I only do this and we get off at exactly 5 p.m. And, you know, you're not the right person for me. You're not an entrepreneurial support system. So for all of you listening today or seeing this, you know, Stephen will also help you with you getting culling the herd <laughs> you know getting rid of those people that aren't that may look temporarily like they're helping you but actually they are um anchors on your sale you would be proud bob uh called me last night 10 o'clock my time midnight his time because he was trying to process twenty thousand dollars in uh, in revenue and urgently having some glitch and wanted me to you know give give him some advice on it and, um, um, you know, Joe and the kids were with me. They said, he's calling you this lady and I. I said, yeah, that's what, you know, he's following the money and he's eager to get in the bank. That's exactly what I want him to do. Well, what time is it his time? Well, it's uh, 1143 his time. Fantastic. That's exactly so what Who cares? Who yeah, cares exactly. what time it is? Exactly. Exactly. Hey, before we run out of time, let's talk about this. Is You know, for some of the people watching this video, for some of the advisors watching this video, is... You know, they, 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 they've got to know that, we, you know, we have some pretty strict criteria. And, and, you know, the unfortunate fact of your business and my business is I don't know what the ratio is nowadays. I'm going to say 20 to 1. 20 people who reach out to you, 20 people who reach out to me aren't going to be qualified to do it, right? Is um, either because they're too early in their career, they haven't matured in their thinking, or just because they have a, a technocrat's focus on their business rather than a marketer, salesperson, you know, um, customer service focus. But, and, and you and I are both, I mean, we were talking about showing our age and I think we're pretty damn youthful, but you know, we're, 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 we're oh, both. Like yeah. We're, we're, we're both at the point where pardon my language, but we, we, we don't bring in assholes. Right. No. I have a strict no assholes policy. And, and part of that is we're letting people work together in groups and facilitating in groups as well as one-on-one. -on -one. And so I only want people who are going to be, you know, I, I describe it, maybe I stole it from you, a joy to the spirit. You know, if, if I see them coming and want to hide, they're not getting into anything I'm doing. And as soon as I figure that out about them, they're gone. Right. But that's one. But the, the other thing is you and I both really work with one percenters, you know, top 10 percenters, top 10 percenters who want to be one percenters, people who are growth focused, who are open to growing quickly who are already successful in their career, who are really gonna, going to accelerate that growth. And then we bring them into an environment where it's, you know, I don't know what the right term is. It's a combination of mastermind going back to, you know, Napoleon Hill's perspective of that, coaching, look over your shoulder, real-time implementation with real-time learning, right? So we know that most people who come in with a technical background, in this case, you know, planning for people's retirement and managing their wealth and so forth. They very rarely know much about marketing. They don't know much about online marketing, offline marketing, direct mail. Uh, maybe they do hosting meetings, but they really don't understand, you know, the 20 things they can be doing or how to maximize it. That's what we're here for. That and, and processing the sales. But the bad news is, you know, we're for the top 10% to get them to the top 1% of the top 1%. And strict no assholes policy and strict you got to contribute as much as you take from the standpoint of the other people in the group what, what would you add to that lee wow you you did a um that they have <laughs> to have they have to have, you really were good at that yeah. uh they they have to have this natural inclination to work yeah that people who become successful aren't just lucky 
that's just luck is just preparation meeting opportunity as the old saying goes somebody said i i think that um i know that i'm very clear about talking to people before i take them so i can gauge you know are is this person really a productive person uh you know is it are are, are they coming from what i call internal motivation mm -hmm to work, you know, with us? Or are they just, you know, trying to find the magic pill? And do they jump around from coach to coach and prim primarily get fired by people? Um, the other silly question I ask people is how many people have sued you? <laughs> because I need to know that if you're like the sue happy person, um, you know, eh, I'm going to pass. <laughs> yeah. So I, we have to have people who have high integrity, who have a, gr a great work ethic, and who are deeply uh, committed to making serious changes in their life, not just paying lip service to it. I think that's a super important thing that um, I look for and I know you look for. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, on, on that note, you know, and we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up. I want to be sensitive of your time and, and we've, we've gone on a, a, a fair amount here, but what we, what we, do with 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 new clients coming in again they have to fit all those all those criteria but we always start with and almost everybody i talk to let me put it this way they think that if they just had three more new clients a month five more new clients a month 10 more new clients a month they'd be great right that 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 seems to be the mindset if if i had a linkedin expert or a facebook expert or you know whatever it might be and just had more new people coming in everything else about my business is great which is always wrong, um, go back to Peter, is we fed more new traffic into his practice in one month than he had done in the previous year. Well, everything else was broken, right? Is basically all the systems fried, uh, you know, the, the person who was supposed to be doing follow-up, her follow-up was send him an email and wait to hear back. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was just, it was just unbelievable. But, it's again one of those things you can't triple quadruple multiply uh your traffic if you don't have all those other systems in place so we always start with pricing and average revenue per client then we go into the sales introduction process to have a strong prospect to conversion then what our clients have started to call drinking from a fire hose all the different marketing things and implement that systematize it and then you know what happens is your staff falls apart. You got to train the staff and develop the staff, bet, figure figure a better structure, figure out a way to be more profitable uh, with fewer people, with more systems and more automation. So it's a never ending thing. But again, I mean, a lot, a lot of times, as you've seen, Lee, oftentimes we can you know double somebody's net profit in 12 months. Um, and not only can you double their profit, you you are actually making sure that you are guaranteeing great success in the future because you're building a new foundation for them. And uh, I, I, I'm just going to say this, people who are listening to this or seeing this, they just heard you say, oh, things are going to fall apart. And that scared them. Yeah. Actually, you should look forward to realizing that you have people that actually that you pay who actually don't work for you uh they actually are sabotaging you the way that they answer the phone or i mean you know if you would do mystery shopping to your own place you might be mortified right. at they, they they are not looking to get the name and address and how to contact people they're not finding out what they are uh are they poo-pooing it are they being negative in some way um a lot of really successful entrepreneurs are so sabotaged by things they're not even aware of i think working with you will open up their eyes and don't be afraid of that folks um th there's an interesting thing about manifesting and being a creator and that's what i consider us to be manifestors and creators and you have to destroy the old to create the new and yeah. you shouldn't be afraid of that because everything changes. And if you're not ahead of the change, that means you're behind the change. And if you're behind the change, that means you're going to do what everybody else is doing. There is no uh, draw or traction towards you. And in, in conclusion, what I really want to say to everybody is 
when you work with Stephen, an amazing thing will happen. Your confidence will explode. It will become much stronger. You'll sleep better at night. Your health will be better. Your relationships will be better because you will feel like I'm on the right path. An instant thing happens when all you get those feelings, and that is called confidence. Confidence is the greatest money-making energy on earth because everybody in this world is so frigging insecure. They're, they're looking for somebody who knows what the hell they're saying and doing. And as soon as they find that person, you know, they suddenly realize, oh, you know, I've got, I've got the North Star there. You know, I can follow the North Star. Your confidence will absolutely explode. And remember that when you meet people, uh, fear and doubt, uh, or if you're needy, like we're all salespeople, but if you're a needy salesperson, you are you are repelling your potential client so greatly that you've got to have this confidence of, you know, I can help you. Uh, you know, I have systems, I have proof. People are going to clamor towards you, um, and you know this about me. Um, I, 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 I market, but I don't. I don't really do a lot of it because I get so much word of mouth uh, advertising for my work because people know I'm very outspoken and I tell the truth. So, but I do market at the right places at the right times to get the right people. And that's exactly the path that you have to have. But again, that I call it the secret sauce and that is confidence. And you yeah. won't get it by yourself because you will go into doubt. You will go into insecurity when things don't go well, or you have a sort of a slow month, but you don't know how many things are hurting your headwinds they're they're slowing you down and one of them is your mindset yeah and if you think you can be alone on a on a successful ship you are wrong you cannot be alone you need people around you who can support you and help you stay on target yeah and 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 uh you were talking about that confidence i mean nothing nothing helps your closing ratio more than having a line of people down the block wanting to work with you and nothing makes your sales ratios go down then feeling like you got to have this one. It's, uh, it's just the, the opposite of, re, of what most people think. Yeah. And, and, and folks, if you've never read the book, Think and Grow Rich, uh, Napoleon Hill actually talks about this a great deal that, you know, we know dogs and horses can pick up fear. Well, let me tell you, people on an unconscious level can feel if you're needy or you're desperate for the sale, they feel it. And then they feel repulsed by you. They're yeah. not, they're not conscious of it. They don't know why they showed up at your office, went to the appointment, but somehow left without signing anything. It's because they, there's something within you that is not giving them, you know, that go ahead because you don't have confidence in yourself. And even more specifically, why would anybody want you managing their wealth if it feels like you're desperate yourself? I mean, it's, it's the opposite. You want somebody who's got their finances under control, who have plenty of money coming in, plenty of clients coming in. People want to deal with successful people, especially if they're going to do something as emotional as turn their money over to you and let you let you manage it they better believe that uh, that you have all that under control yourself yes and your life has to look good i mean if you haven't seen steven's house <laughs> wow i mean this is this i mean the view in the house and everything is so phenomenal uh, i will tell you a joke years ago um it's not really a joke it's true i mean I'm new and young and everything. And, uh, you know, people are vice presidents of banks. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be so impressed. <laughs> and yeah. I remember looking at their shoes thinking, Hmm, how could you be so successful wearing such cheap shoes? Yeah. Mentality. <laughs> my, my picture of the average financial planners website is the guy sitting there in a JC Penney suit, behind a, uh, an oak desk and you know, it, it, everything is milk toast. Everybody is the same. And it, it all has that, you know, run of the mill rudimentary, you know, nothing special about them. If you look like everybody else, what's the point of looking at you? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hey Lee, on that note, uh, anything to, uh, uh, to add to wrap up? I think we, we covered quite a bit of ground. I'm going to wrap up how I usually wrap up everything. Your point of power in this lifetime is this second. 
make very good decisions because every decision you make affects your future. And it's never the, the action you take you regret. It's the actions you didn't take you regret. You bet. You bet. On that note, thank you, Lee Miltier. And uh, 